Today we're going to look inside a Kenner Employee Model Maker's Binder at some Star Wars toys that we never saw and some that we did. Welcome back to the Junk Room everybody. It's me, the Jump Man, coming back at you with a new video. What are we going to talk about today? Well, you know you saw the teaser, you saw the Taylor, Taylor, you saw the title and more. We're going to look inside a binder. Not John Binder, Kenner Binder. This is from a model maker designer and handed down to a collector. I'll put his name right here because I know if I try to pronounce it, I'll butcher it. And I don't want to do that. He's a good guy. Uh, so anyway, this binder came from one of the model makers. And it shows about 30 pages of Star Wars toys that were planned for 1979. Now some of these are just like the ones we got at the store. Uh, some of them were early prototypes. And at least one time... It's just an action figure used to sell something else. We'll talk more about that. As always, become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. Get exclusive content. Buy a t-shirt like this. They're on sale this weekend. Blah, blah, blah. You're not here for all that. You get tired of hearing the same old thing. Over and 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 over again. So let's just get right to this and look at this binder. I'm going to throw the photos up here and talk about each one. And it's always, I love finding this old Star Wars history, uh, you know, stuff that was before Star Wars was mainstream. That's my favorite time period of Star Wars, like 76 to 80, you know, when people were still getting to know Star Wars. Let's look at the first page here. Um, this is just the basic figures being planned for 1979. As you can see here, there's nine figures to be added to the line. And this it must be kind of late in the production because, as you can see, Snaggletooth has already been fixed. But you'll notice, I'm sure you will, the Boba Fett. Look at him. That's an early prototype of a Boba Fett. Man, that would be an awesome figure to have. But let's take a look at what the information says. Nine new figures for 79. Hey, nine for 79. That should have been their slogan. Greedo's got his height. Comes with a laser, laser pistol that fits into his hand. I always like that about Greedo and Luke. X-Wing, how it would fit into their hand. Uh, Hammerhead is a little taller. It comes with a laser pistol. Snaggletooth carrying a Stormtrooper rifle, which if I'm correct, I don't think he came with that rifle. I could be wrong. It's just top of my head. Luke Skywalker, X-Wing uh, pilot, comes with a laser pistol. R5-D4, similar to R2-D2, blue markings. Power droid with a clicking sound and soft antenna. Antenna, however you say it. Death Star Droid, silver chrome color with black painted eyes and details. Walrus Man with Stormtrooper Rifle. And the classic Boba Fett, Galactic Bounty Hunter with spring-loaded backpack rocket. Yeah, right, Kenner. And it's for ages four and up. Well, that's a look at series. That was series two, of course. Of course, Boba Fett probably the one that changed the most here. Some of these, I'm not really sure about the weapons, if there's the ones it says it comes with. Maybe. Top of my head. Power droid, people, I know, people call him Gonk or something because he says Gonk. I don't know why. You know, 3PO says a lot of words, but they don't, they don't call him by what he says. I don't understand why they call him Gonk. I hate that. But power droid, he's always a power droid to me. I always love this figure. He gets a bad rep. But I like that he makes clicking sounds with his legs and that little rubber part on top. I uh, always love that. So here's a look at number two here. We did get the release. And uh, if I'm right, this photo is actually used some of the promotion. Maybe on the back of the card, or the figure cards. I can't remember exactly. But this is just the carrying case. So let's take a look. A sturdy vinyl collector's case holds up the 24 Star Wars minifigures. All in a special compartment. And there we see Luke Skywalker standing on the tray. What I like about these is these trees, trays would flip over and be action figure stands. Uh, well, that's what it says right here on the memo. Should have waited and read. Turn over trays for a for a Death Star mini action figure display stand. Um... Correct me if I'm wrong. Why is it a Death Star mini stage? Uh, I don't remember it coming with a Death Star backdrop. I could be wrong. Could be wrong. It has a carrying handle in case Amy Kobe calls you and wants you to bring your Star Wars figures over to her house uh, so you can play with Star Wars. But it never happens. And figures are not included. Of course figures aren't included. That would be too much to ask for. Um, one thing we all wanted to do after we saw Star Wars is punch Chewbacca in the face. Okay, maybe we didn't. But we could have with the blow up Chewbacca doll, doll, punching bag. Let's take a look at it. 50 inches tall pop bag of Chewbacca, the Wookiee hero of Star Wars fame. 
Star Wars fan. That's an odd way to put it, Star Wars fan. But Wookiee won't be put down. Oh, is that like a reference to when you put dogs to sleep? He returns to stand-up position after each punch. Made of touch, heat, sealed vinyl. Oh, maybe it won't pop like that stupid lightsaber they came up with. Ages two and up. I, I never had these popping bags when I was a kid, but I know my brother had a Spock one. And I love punch, blowing that thing up and punching in. I love that. Uh, let's look at a playset now. I don't think this one from this photo has changed much since the release, but hey, maybe you pick up something I didn't notice. Let's take a look. The Star Wars Cantina Adventure Set. Authentic, most icely cantina interior with remote door open action. Now, I know it has a button for the doors to swing open. I wouldn't call that a remote opening. Hand levers simulate laser fight as Ben, Obi-Wan Kenobi, knocked over a cantina figure in front of the bar. And you can see a picture of that as Obi-Wan about to knock over a walrus man. I always love those little levers to knock over the figures. Star Wars Cantina Band Backdrop. Foot pegs allow several mini action figures to stand in cantina interior. Figures, of course, not included, ages four and up. Again, I don't really see anything different here from looking at this photo. I don't think this photo was used for a promotion. Could be wrong again. I didn't look at every promotion before I made this video, but off the top of my head, I don't think this was used for any of the promotional material. But it very well could have been. Um, let's take another. Let's take a look at the board game. And no, it's not Escape from Death Star. That, everybody knows about that game. Let's look at another one. This is the Star Wars Adventure R2 D2 game. Follow R2 D2 through the movie adventure in this exciting game. Spinner provides color for movement along path on game board. First to reach the rebel base wins. Ages four and eight. Sorry, if you're nine, you can't play this. Sorry. Anyway, that's a board game. I don't got much to say about board games. Never had this one, never played it, never seen it outside the box. You know, I've never seen it, but in photos and stuff, don't know anyone that had it. So let's get back to the toys. That's what we like the most. How about a ship? Yep, one that you could stand Darth Vader in. Take a look. Here it is, Star Wars Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Darth Vader's personal command ship. Authentic details in evil gray. Flashing laser lights, whining laser sound, and of course batteries are not included. Button ejects both solar panels, opening hatch, and remote seat lever to rise minifigure of Darth Vader. Figure not included, ages four and up. Now this one here I think is a prototype. It looks a little different, especially the wings and everything. I like that it said evil gray. That's crazy. You know, it's not gray, it's evil gray. I don't know what the difference between gray and evil gray is. And let's see what else it said. Oh. Flat, uh, the whining laser sound that all the toys that made sound made. The Falcon made it, the X-Wing made it, the Hans pistol made it, and TIE Fighters made it. It was too much. So let's take a look and see what else we have now. Oh, another, uh, this is one of my holy grail, something I've always wanted and never had. Let me mute my uh, sound so you won't hear that beep every time somebody sends me an email or a text. Um, this is one of the holy grails I never had. The Sandcrawler Remote Control. Check it out. The Star Wars Radio Controller Jawa Sandcrawler. Authentic looking replica of the Sandcrawler which captures R2-D2 and C-3PO in Star Wars movie. In Star, in Star Wars movie. That sounds funny. 16 inches long, can travel in any position. Top hatch, top hatch opens to reveal control room with foot pegs to hold several Star Wars Jawas. Side with entry steps folds down revealing a large inside play area with elevator. Play area can be used for droids and other mini action figures. Hand opening elevator lifts R2-D2 and other mini action figures inside. Light features inside provides additional play value in dark rooms. I didn't even remember this thing lit up. Does it light up? Like I said, I haven't seen this thing in years. I never had one myself. I didn't know it lit up or I just forgot about it. Let me know in the comments. Use three C batteries and two 9 volt batteries not included. Mini action figures not included. They just five and up. As you can tell, that remote control is different than one release, completely different. Uh, you know, the one release looked, looked like it was part of the Sandcrawler. That's just some kind of generic looking Star Wars box. I don't know what it was for. Something they threw together really fast for the photo. And it says it takes, that remote takes a six volt battery. But if I remember right, it's a nine volt that went into the remote. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong again. I never had this as a kid. Don't know anyone that did, so maybe I'm wrong. Uh, what else we're gonna look at? Oh. The movie viewer, remember that? Where you put the cartridge in, spin it around. They did Star Wars and other things. 
I loved this thing as a kid. It was my Netflix back in the day. Let's take a look. Movie Cassette Library. Color action scenes from three favorite kid movies. Didn't even say it was from Star Wars. Odd. Six different cassettes available. From Star Wars. Okay, it looks like they're telling you all about them, not just the Star Wars one. From Star Wars, one from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and one from International Velvet. That don't even sound like a kid movie. What is International Velvet? Sounds like a dirty porn movie from the 70s. Each cassette used for any Kenner movie viewer. Okay, one of the biggest Star Wars things out there, at least in 1977, before the toys hit the stores, were the Star Wars Kenner puzzles. These were a huge seller. I think it came in second to the action figures. Uh, not really much to look here, but uh, let's take a look at it. There's three pages to talk about the puzzles, so let's take a look. We got this one here. It shows the Jawa taking R2 and uh, the Sand People riding the Bantha. Uh, I'm not going to read all the information on these. It's not really anything that really that fun or new or different, so let's just look at the pictures. You got the uh, Yavin with the X-Wing, and then, of course, you got the long shot uh, of the puzzle piece right here of the in ceremony i call it a lot larger because you notice you can see some of the background characters that i don't think you actually see in the film especially those on the far left could be wrong uh got the hallway with the stormtrooper which is more of a promotional shot not anything we saw in the film and we got a falcon leaving a planet is that yavin i can't really tell but that's a look at the puzzles sorry went a little fast with that um let's look at large scale figures here's one c 3PO. This one here doesn't look anything different from a release, I don't think. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. This 12-inch figure detailed in bright gold metallic finish. Movable arms, legs, and head for exciting action poses. It can have movable legs and arms and head. You're not going to get any exciting poses out of this thing. I mean, it just stands here straight up like this. I guess you can do this with it and move his head, but I wouldn't call that exciting. Uh, let's look at the diecast. Let's look at some of the diecast toys that were in this binder. The Star Wars diecast spacecraft series one. Four highly detailed, sturdy replicas made of diecast metal and high impact plastic, all with working parts. New diecast Darth Vader Tie Fighter with removable solo panels and figure of Darth Vader. X Wing Fighter with opening and closing wings, figure of Luke Skywalker in opening cockpit. Land speeder with wire axle to give wobbly hovercraft ride. Painted figures of Luke Skywalker and a gold metallic figure of 3PO in cockpit. A TIE fighter with removable solar panels and figure of Darth Vader. Darth Vader and a TIE fighter? What? Ages four and up. And there's, I don't think those are really different. Now the Vader one looks a little darker than the one we released, which I think probably was more of a evil gray color, but it could be just the photo. So I'm not really sure, but it looks more blue, dark blue than uh, what we got released here. Uh, so let's look at another set of diecast figures. This was series two. And these, of course, as you can see, are early prototypes. They look a lot different than the ones we got in the store. Three highly detailed, sturdy replicas made of diecast metal. Uh, it says the same thing. Millennium Falcon with shrivel laser cannon and radar scope. Cockpit contains Han Solo and Chewbacca figure. Folding landing gear. Y-wing figure with removable fuel pod, swivel laser cannon, and remote lever to drop a laser bomb. The Imperial Cruiser with opening bottom hatch with removable replica of Princess Leia's Royal Command Ship, ages four and up. And you can see that looks a lot different. I mean, they're a lot wider and slicker, and then all the movable parts like the laser cannons and stuff are bright red. So this is probably just an early prototype before they went into great detail. Now let's get back over the 12 inch line and look at Han Solo. Kinda. We might be looking at Parker Stevenson. Here's a prototype of the soon to be released 12 inch large size Han Solo action figure. That's Parker Stevenson from the Kenner's Hardy Boys line. They just took it and threw some Han Solo clothes on it. Authentic outfit from Star Wars with leather vest. As you can see here, although the people call them 12 inch, they're not exactly 12 inch figures. So don't tell me in the comments below they're not 12. Figure has movable arms, legs, and head for a exciting action pose. A gun belt and holster for laser pistol and removable boots. Rebel Alliance Galactic Medal of Hero. Sure, those boots come off, but good luck trying to get them back on. You're going to need baby powder and a lot of time. Uh, another from that 12-inch line, or 
it's not 12 inch at all but that's what most people call the large sky that's what most people call the large scale figures 12 inch let's look at r2d2 i don't think this one again is any different from what we got released silver head clicks and turns Secret button in front opens a rear compartment containing computer cards showing electronic circuits and Death Star plans. Seven and a half inches, figure with movable legs and rolling wheels, ages four and up. R2 was a really good one of the line, really good detail. I always liked R2 the part of that line. Uh, another one that they released was Stormtrooper. Check this photo out. Here's the Star Wars Stormtrooper large size action figure. And you're saying, wait a second. That looks more like the mini action figure released by Kenner. Well, they're going to do a 12 inch that looks exactly like the mini action figure? Well, sadly not. This here is probably just a stock photo of the original mini action figure Stormtrooper. They probably didn't have the Stormtrooper ready by the time they needed to make this binder, so they just threw this in. Darth Vader's menacing soldier, detailed in white and black armor. 12 inch figure with movable arms and legs for action poses. Laser rifle for simulating laser battles with Luke and his rebel forces, ages four and up. I never really liked the release Stormtrooper because it was all just one big mold, unlike most of the other figures in the line. I don't know why, they just went cheap with the Stormtrooper. They just went really cheap with the Stormtrooper. Let's get back to punching Star Wars characters. If you didn't want to punch Chewbacca, don't worry. Kenner was going to let you punch a Jawa. Now this one here is a little different than the one released. It's the Star Wars Jawa pop bag. 36 inches tall pop bag of Jawa, the glowing eye collector of broken down robots. Give him a pop. He always rocks back upright for more. Made of touch heat sealed vinyl for little boppers two and up. The little boppers, now I've heard of the big bopper. Hello baby. Now that we saw what was for the little bopper, let's see what else is out there. Let's go back to another playset, And it has to do with Jawas once again. The Star Wars Land of the Jawa. Now, I don't think this photo here either was ever used for promotion, but I really like it. I like that Luke Skywalker is falling down and fighting a Tusken Raider. I'm glad they actually took that time to do an exciting scene. Toy style like a Tatooine desert with Jawa Sandcrawler. A lever makes many action figures knock each other down in battle. Boulders and cave to hide the figures. Replica of the escape pod with viewing window used by R2-D2 and C-3PO to get away from Darth Vader. Rocket opens and any two mini action figures will fit inside. Include Sandcrawler with an elevator, a rear platform that holds four mini action figures. Mini action figures not included. It's probably just said with elevator, not with working elevator. But it said it came with boulders. Now I know it came with the cave that you could put something in, but I don't remember a boulder. I don't think it came with a boulder, did it? I don't believe so. Um, again, nothing really different about this picture here. I don't see anything. Again, I just love the action pose. Um, don't really see much more to add here. Comes with the escape pod, always a nice little feature to come with. It didn't tell you that this was just a cardboard backdrop, although it had some play value, unlike some of the others. Uh, but they didn't really highlight that this was just cardboard. Uh, let's see what's next. This is was something not released in the U.S., but did get a Canada release, sadly. And here's the Star Wars Primetime Char. I mean, here's the Star Wars Plus Jawa, Plus Jawa figure, styled after the glowing eyed robot collector from Smash Hit Movie. Special feature, secret punch to hide small treasures and a squeak speaker in left arm, ages three and up. Sadly, we never got that here in the US. Canada did he get it. Uh, it looked a little different, not much different here, but you wanna see something that looks totally different than what we did get, and we got it in Canada or the US or other places, the Dubek. As you can see, this prototype of the Dubek looks a hell of a lot different than what we got. This one looks more like a little dinosaur you will see on Land of the Lost. The Star Wars Patrol Dubek, tattooing lizard ridden by Darth Vader stormtroopers. Dragon has movable legs. When tail moves side to side, head moves opposite direction. Removable saddle, figure not included for and up. First they call it a Dubek, then they call it a lizard, and then they call it a dragon. What is it, Kenner? Make up your mind. Okay, well as you can see that one was totally, totally different. They redesigned that whole thing. That's kind of cool looking though, but I think the one we got looks more like what we saw in the movie anyway. That really didn't. Let's go take another look at a board game. The Star Wars Destroy Death Star game. Take your squad of X-Wing fighters to do battle with the TIE fighter in Death Star. Get one X-Wing down the tunnel and destroy Death Star to win. Ages 7 to 12. 
Now, I never had this one here either. I don't know if it was any different. I don't think it was. It looks like about what I remember seeing in books and pictures and stuff. So let me know if that one was any different. Um, but here's something that is different here and something that a lot of us that played with Star Wars had or at least begged for every Christmas. Star Wars Millennium Falcon. As you can see here, this is a very early prototype. Uh, the chessboard inside is orange and it just has a lot more slicker look to it. Star Wars Millennium Falcon Spaceship. The replica is over 20 inches long. Button activates laser sound, batteries not included. Opening cockpit cover reveals flight seats with pilot Chewbacca and Han Solo. Rear back opens as mini action figure play environment. Folding landing gear, fold down entry ramp. Swiveling laser cannon with seat for Luke Skywalker minifigure. Secret compartment to hide from stormtroopers. Remote force ball for lightsaber practice. Figures, of course, not included. And it's four and up. As you can see, that early prototype looks a lot different. It's where they added a lot of details and everything to it. Um, now, I thought I talked about all the puzzles, but I missed this one. So let's take a look real quick. And here we just have a picture of the land speeder coming into Mos Eisley. It's the, these aren't the droids you're looking for photo. And of course, a promotional photo of a Tusken Raider. Now, let's get back to 12 inch. Probably the best of the line, of course, is Boba Fett. Now, I did a whole video about the plan electronic 12 inch boba fett that was going to shoot the rocket it was going to talk it was going to do a lot more than we got so you might want to check that video i'll put it at the box at the end of this video so you can easily find it but let's take a look at it star wars boba fett galactic bounty hunter large size action figure a large 13 inch replica of the newest star wars character the ruthless intergalactic bounty hunter action figure includes a removable backpack with three safe springfield rockets mobile range finder to locate targets Swivel jets, LED lights in his chest plate, removable arm flamethrower, removable dart weapon, and electronic sounds. Figure also has Wookiee scalps, a cape, knee darts, handgun, and holster. Ages four and up. Out of all of these, this this is the one I wish we had, don't you? Whoa, this just looks amazing. First, I think it looks maybe a little bit better than the actual one we got. Although the one we got is pretty damn good. But that one looks really good. And it, LED lights. Electronic sounds. This thing just looked awesome. Again, I did a whole video on it, so you want to check it out. Wait till the end of the video and click the box. So let's look at, uh, I think we got two more. Let's go back to play sets and more Jawa play sets. The Star Wars Droid Factory. As you can tell from this prototype, this thing looks a hell of a lot different than what we got and a lot less fun. You build five separate robots at the same time. Pieces interchangeable for constructing hundreds of different looking robots. Factory has base for storage, swivel boom to transport parts to assembled area, ages four and up. Yeah, I don't got much more to add other than that thing looks a lot different. It's missing the ramp, it's just shaped all different. What we got, although it's not one of the best play sets they ever made, I don't think, but it's not the worst. Um, it's, it looks better than the prototype, that's for sure. Now let's look at one more, and this one here looks a lot different than we got also. It's the, Imperial Troop Transporter. As you can see here, this thing looks nothing like what we got released. And this one here has what looks like the engine from an X-Wing fighter on top of it. The Imperial Troop Transporter. Big, 13 inch long vehicle. A replica of the Star Wars land speeder hovercraft used by stormtroopers to track down R2-D2 and 3PO on Tatooine. Carries 8 minifigures including 2 drivers has a special prisoner compartment for R2 and other small droids. Six exciting sounds, laser gun, big cannon gun, land speeder motor, Darth Vader's voice, 3PO's voice, and R2-D2 clicks and beeps. For play action with Star Wars minifigures, children can open front hatch to easily access the driver control seats. Has special suspension that wobbles and bounces hovercraft air ride, figures not included. Now that one looks a lot different. Anyway, that's a look at the Kenner binder of some prototypes or plans for 1979. Some of them, of course, look different. Some look just like what we got. Um, anyway, let me know what you think about this binder in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. Thumb up something about my content. And we'll talk again soon. Junk man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.